Hi again, this is Bob Kilner with my sixth video of my YouTube video series on how to perform a dilution. Now as you can see, this video I'm not doing a live um, video, I'm doing a PowerPoint recording, and the reason being, um, performing the dilution itself is as simple as mixing water and a chemical together, which is not that difficult. I figured almost any lay person can do that, and being that I've already done that in some of my first videos, I figured I didn't need to re-demonstrate that. What I'm actually going to show in this video is how to calculate what what um, amount of chemical and what amount of water we need to do this dilution. So we need to ask ourselves first, what is a dilution? You've heard of the word dilute, you've heard of diluting, things like that. Well, let's get a real better um, definition for this. Most chemicals come in a concentrated form, and they're way more concentrated than anything any kind of experiment would require. And this is good for us from a financial standpoint because what we can do with this dilution is use, end up using a lot less chemical than we actually need. In fact, using such a concentration of this high concentration that they're sending us will often cause an experiment's results to become inaccurate or unreadable. And for the sake of you know, being accurate in the lab and getting good results to help either teach ourselves or show, you know, reinforce an idea that, we, that we've been studying, um, this isn't a good thing. So what we do to perform this dilution then, since we don't need such a concentration, we can use uh, we can water down the concentrated solution using distilled or deionized water. What I mean by water down is as simple as you hear watered down. You hear it in in terms of cheap restaurants, how they'll water down ketchup, they'll water down Coke, things like that. Um, it's exactly that. Now, what distilled and deionized water is, is they are types. They're the same thing. They're a type of water that is simply H2O, it's simply hydrogen and oxygen only, and it has ions which are charged particles such as fluoride removed. We know that they put fluoride in our drinking water for the sake of helping our teeth. Well, it removes all these extra chemicals that have been added in so they don't react with the chemical that we're, we're going to be watering down, whether it's an acid or a base or some other um, type of chemical. Well, how we do it. Chemical concentrations are generally measured in molarity, which is a unit of concentration. And there's a simple formula for figuring out how much chemical and how much water we need to reach our desired concentration. It's actually a very simple formula that's probably the most commonly used in a general chemistry laboratory, in a high school chemistry laboratory, uh, and even in a middle school um, physical science laboratory. So that formula is this. M sub A times V sub A equals M sub B times V sub B. Now what these mean? M sub A is the concentration of the chemical. V sub A is the volume of that same chemical. M sub B is the concentration of the distilled water, and V sub B is the volume of the distilled water. Now, in the in using this formula, we're going to need we're going to ha have to have three of the four variables so that we can solve for the fourth one. So, an example using this then. A stock solution. Now, a stock solution is what I talked about before when we buy something like hydrochloric acid, nitric acid, um, uh, or even a base, they are of a very, very high concentration, and we're going to dilute that down and water it down. So a stock solution of hydrochloric acid is purchased and has a concentration of 15 molar, represented as 15 capital M. How much acid is required to dilute this solution to 50 milliliters of 6 molar? Okay, so both of our concentrations on, on each side of the equation are going to be in um, molarity, okay? So since we have one volume we're looking for the other volume, it's going to also be in milliliters, the volume we're looking for. So using the formula M sub A times V sub A equals M sub B times V sub B, we simply plug in our values. M sub A equals 15 molar times V sub A, which we don't know, that's our question mark, or if you want to represent it algebraically, you can make it an X, but I did this for simplicity because of using the times sign, equals M sub B. M sub B, like, I, I described this before as the um, concentration of the water. What this is, is the concentration of the water and chemical mix afterward. So, 6 molar is going to be the concentration we desire times the volume we desire, which is 50 milliliters. When we work this out, we get 15 molar times the question mark equals 300 molar times milliliters. So when we solve for the question mark, 300 molar milliliters over 15 molar, we're left with 20 milliliters of acid. So to get this, what this means at the end of the day then 
is we have to add 20 milliliters of acid and get it to 50 milliliters by adding 30 milliliters of water. That's our final answer there. This is how you perform a dilution.